All right, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about setting up a dedicated server for you and the crew. So as long as your computer is running and you have the server opened up, anyone can log on at any time without you and your character having to literally be logged into the game. So we are going to head on over to the Steam page. We're going to check out an amazing guide set up by an amazing Craftopian to figure out how to set up our dedicated server. We will be using Steam CMD. And it's probably going to be very similar to setting up a Valheim dedicated server if you've done that before. So without further ado, let's boogie. So navigate to Steam Library, find Craftopia, and we're going to start with guides. We're going to be looking for Steam CMD by Zero Mix. Thank you, sir. Most appreciated. So before we get started here, to stay organized, I want you to open your file explorer. Go to this PC and whatever hard drive you have Steam downloaded on. Where I want you to navigate. So you can just right click and we're gonna do new folder and you're gonna name it, I would name it Craftopia Dedicated Server, but whatever you want. That's where we're going to be extracting our Steam CMD to. So at the moment, this will be empty and now it's populated. So 6587, we'll come back to that port number here shortly once we set up our port forwarding. What we are going to start with is Steam CMD download. So you can click on the link it's going to start a download, bottom left, so if you have WinRAR or 7-zip, you're going to open that up whenever it's done. Connect it out of the page, and we're just going to extract steamcmd.exe into the folder that we just made. So super simple, you can either hit extract to and navigate to that folder manually, or you can literally just drag and drop it over into this folder you made. It'll populate, and now you got Steam CMD in here. So once you extract or drag and drop, what we're doing next is logging in to Steam CMD anonymously. So you can control C just to make it easier on yourself. And we're gonna run Steam CMD. Neat, it's doing things. It'll say Steam, control V, login anonymous, neat. Now, it needs a spot to put the dedicated server folder. So I won't be doing this part, but it's literally just going to be once again, control C and control V. That is going to create the Craftopia and you can hit enter. That'll create the Craftopia DS folder. So inside of my Craftopia dedicated server, it now created Craftopia DS, which is this bad boy right here. Next, I need to update it. Any time that the game has an update, no matter how small, you need to open Steam CMD, log in anonymously, and then copy and paste this into the command prompt. So, Control V. And now that is going to start updating the game on the dedicated server side of things. Neat. Once it says success at the bottom, fully installed, you can then type exit. Or if you're really concerned, control C and control V. <laughs> All right guys, so outstanding. Next, we are just going to run the server. So everything has been made now. We just need to create a batch file that is going to run the server. So control C on that bad boy. I am going to open my folder, Craftopia DS, and I already have mine here, so run for Craftopia DS is what I named it. You're going to make a new text document. So right click, new, text document, name it, run for Craftopia, whatever you want. You're going to open it up, control V, and then file save. Boom. Again, I've already done that, so I'm not. Neat. So what that did is it made this uh, Windows batch file. So now I'm just going to run the Craftopia dedicated server by clicking this. I can also right click, create shortcut, 
which will then populate this on your page. And then you can just drag and drop that onto your desktop. And voila, you would have something like that. So I just put it right on my Craftopia. So I double click this to run the server and I double click that to play my actual Craftopia. And then I just log in via multiplayer through the IP address. So next step, we made the batch file, file saved. We now have our ability to run the server. So what you want to do next is navigate to the server settings.any file. So we're just going to control C on that again, make it simple on ourselves, go up to the top here and control V. Neat. So server setting down here at the bottom, you need to change host is use steam lobby from one at default to zero. Literally just change it from one to zero. And then you can file and save. Neat. All right, so that ensures that you will be able to join the server. Very nice. So now let's see if we can't get our current world on our single player account into the dedicated server so we don't have to start from scratch again. How are you gonna do that? Converting your single player world into multiplayer. So you're going to control C this link, open your file explorer and the search bar, control V, neat. We're gonna copy and paste everything except for the Steam Auto Cloud. Don't touch it. So drag up, control C, and I'm just going to go back one, so hit the up arrow, and I'm looking for dedicated server save. This is gonna be under pocket pair, Craftopia. Dedicated server save. It is also the same URL address down here, or not URL, sorry, this is the same file folder search address down here at the bottom, so you can also just drag and drop that up here. Anyways, once I get in here, click Control V, replace the files in the destination, outstanding. So once I copy and pasted all the save backup whatevers into the dedicated server, I am then going to re-navigate to my server setting.any file. So you can come up here, control C, folder, control V, neat. Or you could have just gone back since that's literally where we just were. <laughs> uh, server setting, double click, game world. I have, you have to change the name to the exact world that you were wanting to copy over. So I have like three different worlds, Bradshaw's box, mod world, something else. Anyways, made sure it is spelled verbatim, capitals, spaces, punctuation, everything verbatim. And now whenever I log into the server, it should be identical to my single player world. Neat. Yeah, we changed the name from no name at default to Bradshaw's box or Ironcrad in his uh, situation. Very nice. So the dedicated server is made. We have updated it. We have transferred our world over and we know how to re-update the server in case of any new patches or updates that come to the game. So everything has been covered except for port forwarding. So back to our numbers at the top here, guys. UDP slash TCP 6587. These are the, this is the port number that we are needing to forward so that others can join our dedicated server from a separate PC. So to do that, I want you to control copy 6587. We're gonna go down to the bottom here and you're gonna type firewall and you're gonna pull up Windows Defender Firewall. We're gonna to go to advanced settings. This is where we're gonna set up our port forwarding. So at the top here, we have inbound rules and outbound rules. We're gonna make two rules in each. Two for inbound, two for outbound. As you can see, I've already made my rules here, but I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. So you're gonna to come to the top right under inbound rules. You're gonna hit new rule at the top right. We're gonna create port Next, we're gonna make a rule for TCP and then we're gonna come back and make another new rule for UDP. So make sure it says specific local ports, 6587, neat. Next, allow the connection. Next, all those are checked. Next, and you can name it and type a description, whatever you care to do to dignify it. So that was TCP. I'm gonna go back, do another new rule, 
Same exact thing, port next. Now I'm gonna change it to UDP 6587. Specific local ports, next. Allow the connection, next. Everything's checked, next. And then name it Craftopia Dedicated Server UDP or whatever you want. So again, I'm not making the rules because I already have them in there. The way to double check to make sure everything is correct, you can double click what you named it, go to protocols and ports, TCP, specific ports, 6587, remote ports, all ports, and nothing. So it should look exactly like that. And I'll show you the UDP, protocols and ports, UDP, 6587, all ports. It should look exactly like that. So that was for inbound rules. Now, top left, go to outbound rules. Exact same thing. At the top right, we're gonna do new rule. Click port, next, TCP, 6587, next. I need you to change it to allow the connection. It will be on block the connection by default. So don't forget to check that. Next, all those are checked. Next, and again, name it whatever you'd like. One more time, go back through and do the exact same thing for UDP. So port UDP 6587. Next, allow the connection. Next, all are checked. Next, name it whatever you'd like. Neat. Once again, to double check that you did it correctly, you can double click Craftopia DS or whatever you named it. Or protocols and ports, UDP, all ports. 6587. So this is the exact opposite of the inbound rules. Local port should be all, remote port should be specific. 6587. Neat. Same, oops, that one. Same thing, we'll check the TCP. All ports, 6587. Outstanding. All right, so port forwarding is set up through our firewall. Once you've done to an inbound, to an outbound, you can close out of that bad boy. Now, we need to log into our router to ensure that port forwarding is from our router through our firewall. So, you're going to come down here into your search thingy, type CMD, command prompt. You can run that, and we're going to hit IP config. This is going to pull up all of our IP addresses, so I'm going to look for Ethernet, however I'm connected, so I'm in the Ethernet. Default gateway, 192 point yada yada. So you can control C that, minimize this for now. And I want you to open up Firefox or, or Internet Explorer, <laughs> whatever you use, and the address, control V, whatever your IP was. It's gonna ask you to sign in. Chances are, it. if you haven't changed your router's name or password, it should be the default, whatever's written on the underside of your router. If it's not, good luck, I can't help you. So, admin followed by whatever password was your original router password. For me, I'm gonna go to advanced settings, advanced setup down at the bottom, port forwarding and port triggering. Like that bad boy. As you can see, I've already made my dedicated server ports for Valheim and Craftopia. So it's gonna look exactly the same as we just did it through our firewall. You're going to add custom service. Type in the name, whatever you'd like. So we'll call it Craftopia DS. It needs to be set TCP slash UDP. If there's only an option for one, evidently you'll end up making two rules inside of your router as well. So TCP, UDP, I'm gonna type 6587, 6587, and it's already there for me, 6587. So now, internal ending port. This won't allow you to proceed unless it's correct. So how to find it? It is not what we typed up here. You're gonna come back to your command prompt and you're gonna find your IPv4 address. Mine's 192.168.0.04. So I need that four. Four, neat. So now we're good to go. I can hit apply. That will create the rule. I already have it, so I don't need to make it. So to ensure that you did it correctly, it should look just like this down here at the bottom. ECP slash UDP 6587. External IP address is any internal. TCP slash UDP 6587 and internal IP address, whatever your IPv4 was. Outstanding. So we did the firewalls, we did our router. So the ports should be forward appropriately. So now you can log out of this. We got all that set up. We covered everything here. If you're still having some troubleshooting issues, 
you can come down to the bottom. He's got some frequently asked questions, how to set it up. So again, when we're in the server.any files, you can change it to 8787 or whatever port numbers you feel confident with using. And then you would just do the rules and the inbound outbound rules and in the router with this port as opposed to the 6587 that we use. If you know what you're doing, feel free to try that. Otherwise, stick to what we did. 6587 works just fine. So guys, that was basically everything to one, get the dedicated server built, uh, two, make sure it was the same world that we were playing on on our single player account. Uh, we forwarded the ports and yeah, now it's time to test see if it actually worked. Outstanding. So now to run the Craftopia server. So you can run it if you created a desktop shortcut or you can open your file folder. So what I did is I pinned a quick access, just make it a little easier for me. But otherwise, just navigate it to the same way you did the first time. Go to your hard drive where Steam is downloaded, Craftopia dedicated server, and Craftopia DS. Perfect. So again, when you made that .bat file, it populated the run for Craftopia dedicated server uh, batch file. So we're gonna run this. Consequently, you could also just use the desktop shortcut that you made. Alrighty then, world is loaded. So the server is up and running. Now let's log in. So I'm going to run Craftopia. And remember to leave the command prompts open. I know the black boxes look a little scary, but please leave them open. You can minimize them if you want. Just do not exit out of them. Hey, so once Craftopia is opened up, you can click multiplayer experiment. And we're gonna find our character, new target. We're gonna join via IP. So on your home computer, you're gonna be using the 127 um, followed by the 6587 port. So that's if you're on your home computer. If you want one of your buddies to join, what I need you to do is again, open up, I don't know, go to Google or something, type find my IP. This one's super simple. And we're just looking for the IPv4, which will be different than what we used within our router. So you're going to control C to copy. You can exit out of that. Control V. You can do 6587. So semicolon 6587. That is how your friends are going to log in to your dedicated server. So you can control copy this whole thing and paste it in the Discord, pin it at the top, whatever you gotta do. On your home computer, you're using the 127.0.0.1, semicolon 6587. So keep that in mind. Neat. Now, let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, hopes and dreams. All right, cool, good sign. So it's logging into the world now. Um, if it was a fail, it would have said incompatible version or something along those lines or incorrect IP or something like that. So good luck with that. And it'll probably take a bit longer than your typical load in time going into a world. So just give it a couple moments. Well, we, we made it to the world or in the server. Uh, let me run some troubleshooting. I'll check back with y'all shortly. All right. So like most troubleshooting, you should start with your mods. So I, went, so I went into the workshop and I unsubscribed to all the mods except for the Pepin EX mod loader and big inventory because I didn't want to lose what items I had in my inventory. Similarly, I probably could have just created a new character to test run and make sure it was good, then I wouldn't have to worry about bugging my character. So that's always a great option, uh, especially if you're testing something new. New character, new world, or make backup files. All would be great choices to make sure that you uh, don't hate everything. <laughs> All right guys, so once again, we have the dedicated server already pulled up. I just logged into Craftopia. We're gonna go multiplayer. Pick your turkey, join via IP. Once again, if I'm joining my own server from my computer, it'll be the 127. Otherwise, find your IPv4. Next. Hey, and let's see what happens. 
So I also took off any Nexus mods that I had. There's a new location. So I'll pull that up in another mod video coming up soon. So you can still use mods from the Nexus. It's just not always recommended because it can cause some bugs here and there. Uh, so the one I was using was the Infinite Air Dash and the warning label remover down here at the bottom. So once I clear up and make sure that this server works and I can move around the world and actually play on my character, I'll go back in and troubleshoot and see what mods I can install without conflicting with the game. So, hopes and dreams, it works this time. Hey, look at that. We loaded past four, but now we're on 12. Come on, I believe in you. I think you can do it. Hey, look at that. Oh, goddamn. All right, everybody. There it is. We're in the dedicated server. We are in multiplayer. This is the world that I had created in my single player and transferred to the dedicated server. So anything that was in a chest is still here. And everything I placed is still right here waiting. So, outstanding. You can literally copy everything over from your current world into the new one. And yeah, you and the crew got a great starting place. Something outstanding to build from. So, that, everybody, is how to set up a dedicated server for Craftopia. Very neat. So, similarly, if... Um, I don't know, you're in the dedicated server and you actually destroy everything, you can just log out and recopy all the files from your single player and it'll just repeat. So last time I logged in, uh, we picked up all three of the supply pods and then I just recopy and pasted my world to show you all during the video and hey, all three supply pods are here again. So it's a quick and easy copy and paste. And yeah. Make sure you keep that command pop minimized and don't exit out of it. So, guys, if you have any questions, if you have any troubleshooting you need help with, I'll do my best. You can join the Discord chat with us and the dedicated server. You can join and play with me. I would love to have you. I got my IP address in the dedicated server channel inside the Discord. So, yeah, come hang out. Enjoy the ride. I'll be streaming live on Twitch. We also got a Valheim dedicated server set up, so y'all are more than welcome to join that. So, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I hope this was useful for understanding how to get this set up and not too complicated, and hopefully I wasn't all over the place. So, again, if you got questions, let me know down below or join the Discord. So, thanks a lot, everybody. Good luck, enjoy the ride, and I'll catch you all at some point. Peace out, chill.